Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Beside me, Emily Young. I am very much touched and uh, also feel emotion for the, her presence here. Not because of the fact of what she is, but probably because uh, of the way she approached person and life. We are not here for talking about the same things always people ask her. We are here just to have a nice conversation between two friends that just met. Okay, sounds good. So there is not really some question that I want to do to Emily, but I have some curiosity. And uh, the curiosity is about, uh, yes, about what she is working now, but also the curiosity is about the way she do things, the way she touch the stone, seeing something that can come out from that. That's quite a big um, curiosity. <laughs> there are many, um, many things in there. So, um, I can tell you that um, I don't anticipate precisely what will happen when I find a stone and when I start to work with a stone. Um, I think maybe it will be a head, or I, I will know if it's going to be a head or a torso or a disc. And those are the three things mainly that I do. Um, why I do them is because when I first started to sculpt um, stone, I was always wondering and asking myself, what am I doing? What is happening now between a human and a piece of stone? What is this relationship? And when I'm finding a piece of stone in a quarry or by the side of the road, or I go to a stone yard where they sell exotic stone from around the world. Some of the stones, uh, they talk to me and they say, hello, look me, I'm, I'm very interesting. Me, me, me. And I say, oh, okay, you want to talk to me, you want to play. Um, other, other stones, they say, no, no, I'm private, leave me alone. Okay. And I pass by. And, but when, when a stone does, um, have something that I respond to um, and I start working with it, quite soon I will know also if this will work, if the stone is good to work. And it's like, you know, the, the universe or the, the planet is giving me a little gift with these, with these stones. And so then I, I, I wonder what it is that, what is this relationship made of, that the earth has is made of stone and I'm a very short-lived human and I'm going to have an intervention into this stone's existence on earth maybe it's thousands hundreds of thousands of years maybe billions of years old and also into the future it will have a future so humans have been on earth for maybe 200,000 years um, that's a very short time in terms of stone but I can change the stone, like, like nature will change the stone. The wind, the rain, ice, pressure, volcanoes, earthquakes, all of these things will change the stone. So, and here's me, another one. So, but what is it that I am asking of the stone? What am I doing with the stone? So I think of it as like, it's a friendship, it's a relationship, you could call it a marriage. And um, um, there's a, uh, it's, it, and so then, then it becomes good and, and um, usually, um, it's that I am going to find a place in the stone, as I work with the stone, I'm going to find a place that the, the head, the face, will show a kind of stillness, a thoughtfulness, a reflectiveness, a contemplation of human and planet. And with this stone and this human, 
we come together for a little moment there and I leave my mark, I leave an intervention that the stone has to agree to this. If the stone isn't going to be accommodating to me, we, nothing will happen. If it's too hard, if it's got cracks in it, if it's too soft, if it doesn't want to, it will let you know that, that we, this isn't going to happen, this isn't going to work. But usually we've made a good accord, we've made a good um, agreement beforehand. So the, the piece does grow nicely. So that's what I'm looking for, is the, the picture, the, the, the semblance, the face, the expression of this agreement to work together. Where I respect the stone, the stone is saying, I submit to your desire to play. I will play. I will play with you. If it says it doesn't want to play, I can't play. It lets me know what it can do or what it will do. So I can ask, and almost always, when I actually get to actually doing it, then it's, 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 it's a good marriage. We have a good friendship, we work together. It goes off out into the world again. It gets sold to somebody, or it goes into a museum, or an art gallery, or something, and, or it gets put into a church, or some, somewhere. And then it, it, it's life. It's without me then, and it goes on into the future. In the future, I have no idea what will happen to it. No idea. But they are there, and they will have this look of the stillness that you have to have if you are going to have, from my point of view, it's that if you are going to have a, an honest relationship with this piece of stone, it has to be still. There's, there's no room, it can't be that, hey, we're all having fun here, or oh, I'm terribly upset about something. There's one piece which is Urlo, which is where I was so upset about the scientists telling us in 2006 what was going to be happening. The IPCC report um, of what was going to be happening over these next years. 2006, 13 years ago, and nothing happened at all. And I was very upset and I did a very big sculpture of somebody who was very, very um, anguished. It's agony, There's, uh, because everything that he loves, or she, is, is going to be lost. Some land, some um, family, some children, um, something that means a lot, just one person, but of course it's so many millions and millions and millions of people, and it's happening. It is happening now that people are losing everything. Uh, you know, look at the immigration problems, and the droughts, and the fires, and the, it is an apocalypse that, that we're watching. So um, that was that one piece. One piece. <laughs> So, otherwise, I can understand that the way you work is a, a relationship yeah. between two beings that have a different time on Earth, yeah. but for some reason they meet in a precise moment to tell a story. Yeah, and the story is that we are very, very, very short-lived. We're very quick. Uh, we haven't been here for very long. We've had a huge effect on the Earth. Lots of the other creatures who we share the Earth with, we've not been very kind to them. We don't care if they die and if they lose their, their way of life. And I think that's very rude. It's just rude. I mean, how thoughtless of us to do the, this. And the way you work also uh, show the aspect of this relationship that is based on respect. Because yeah. if you don't respect the stone, the stone doesn't show itself to you. Yes, yes, exactly. So, so um, this thing about looking, if we know, if we can get some idea through this feeling of stillness, when you, when you look at a piece of stone that's been worked and, and there is this face that is still, it's quiet, 
and, and, you, and you can relax. You know how that feels to be that quiet. Most people know it, even if it's not useful in capitalism to have this quietness. You're meant to be always needing the next thing. But, but we know about it. Most of us have been there. That gives you a view over the long, the long history of the Earth back into the past and into the future. And what will we look like? Either to humans who survive, maybe thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, maybe, into the future. Or maybe no one will see it. But it was, it was an intervention by one human. It's, it's, it's poetic. Who knows if it will make any difference at all? In a way, that, that's not my business. My business is to say, I am, I am alive to so much of what is very beautiful and what is very destructive. Uh, the earth is very destructive, volcanoes, earthquakes, this, this is, but that's its job, is to do, it, that's who it, it is, that's what she does. Whereas humans, we have so much self-consciousness, but we're still helpless, we're still, this is what we do. We're very creative, we're very destructive, and sometimes we're thoughtful. And I like this thoughtful bit. I think if we can be thoughtful about, you know, please God, let us be more thoughtful. However, do you think that in this relationship you create with the stone, there is a way to contribute to the evolution of that stone? Yes. I think that the stone um, responds to me, lets me know what it can do, um, then it, it's changed. It could have been wind for millions of years. That's its evolution. It will change, it will be frozen, or it will be it will be thrown down in some um, volcano and it will boil. And that's its, its story. So my, my intervention is very short. Um, but in the same time, this short intervention in time, in the huge amount of time that collapses in a precise moment, Tell a story to humanity now. Yes, I hope so. I think um, if that could be true, that's very good. Um, if people can see that story and read it and experience it. But I think, I think lots of people do. Quite often people tell me that it's, it's made them feel uh, an, an, a connection. Um, and it's this thing only connect, it, you know, it's it just, just to be able to feel what it is that we're in, and that we're not separate, we're not separated from it, we're part, we're part of it. And I think that the stone can embrace us um, because it's so old. We have an imagination where we can go back billions of years and go forwards billions of years. And in that imagination, you can imagine yourself being embraced by the, by the whole story of the planet, that we're not separate from it. They, so, so it in, will hold us. In, if, the, you know. in the way you create evolution to the storm, through your consciousness, consciousness yes. and through your work, you feel that the storm help, help you to open to a new realm of existence. The stone is not dead. It's quiet and it's slow. But it, it helps me. It has its story that it tells me about. The more you know about geology and uh, physics, and the more it can tell you. Um, this whole story of evolution was born in, in um, the early, early geologists looking at fossils, saying, how can this be? This fossil of a, of a shellfish is on the top of a hill. How can this be? And only if you imagine long, long periods of time, suddenly everything works. And that, the, in fact, the earth breathes over the very, you know, bits come up, bits go down, you know. And it's, and so then the story can pass that, that kind of, um, my imagination of what it might like to be like to be a stone. So it's a really a magic that let you meet a being that is so slow and in a precise moment of your life 
that is so fast compared to them, you realize this meeting, yeah. this encounter. Yes. Do you feel that this possibility is a privilege? Yes. For me, because I come from um, a culture, uh, uh, my family, you know, I'm very lucky, very privileged family. I had good education, I had good health care. I was brought up in London and in Rome, places of great cultural dramas and histories and complexities. Also, I was able to travel, so I went to many different countries when I was still quite young. And I saw how people all over the world are engaging with their particular environment. But all, um, I think it's privileged for me because I'm a daughter of capitalism. Um, I think there are many other people who never come near the, the notion of capitalism because they're, they're living very simple lives. They're just trying to make a living out of their land. They don't have very much to sell or to buy. They can't invest in projects. So they, um, so yes, I think other people might have another privilege than the one I had because I also I had a very difficult life. Personally, I, I would say, in terms of finding a, a path that was okay for me to, to travel on. Um, having, but, but I had all the choices. I, I, I went to so many different places and I saw so many different things and I understood and I've read so much about the past and I've read so much about science and da 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 da. Um, so I've had a lot on my, uh, offered to me. Uh, and the, so the privilege, I think, is, is having that bit of luck that you know how to take that and use it. Because I could have been, I don't know, you know, a junkie in a mental hospital with very few brain cells. Yes, left. but this still is a privilege for human. Why the storm should and look for you to express herself? Well, I think she needed somebody who was lucky in the way that I've been lucky to, to have terrible bad luck and also very good luck. So she wants these extremes. <laughs> That's what she wants. She knows all about extremes. That's yeah. So stone handles extremes, you see. So for me to find somebody who was so strong that the stone was so strong and could handle me with all of my human, you know, too many thoughts, too many. Too many worries, too many fears, too many enthusiasms, you know, just nonsense, you know, the chattering brain. Um, so, and the stone, you know, bring it on, baby, you know, <laughs> um, whatever you've got, I can handle. So that's very nice. It is. Um, and I thought, my God, you're not going anywhere, you're not vulnerable, you're not susceptible to my stupidities, cupidities. You don't care if I'm making. Um, a lot of money, or you, you know, you don't care. All you want is for me to be straight, to be honest, to be focused. Because you can't mess around, you can't go on being stupid. You have to exhaust yourself. You have to be, um, and you have to find that quietness in yourself that is responding to the quietness there, which is a great gift. That's the gift that the stone yes. gives. So you are saying a lot of. Uh, gift the stone through the years has given you by working with them but if you sh if you should say the aspect that most touch you and uh, have you learned by working with the stone what will would you say it's something like that if there's any meaning to a human life um it will take work to find it it doesn't just arrive and that that meaning um, is contextualized by space and time but if you can find something that uses all of you uh, and all of me, all of your um, body your your energy your spirit so you will find something that is um, common with, with the planet if you're if you're working at that level, which is not very dramatic necessarily, it can be very quiet. And then you and the planet have a, a close connection. And uh, some people say that the Earth is, is a temple, 
and we are all devotees. So it's like you're learning how to pray in this temple, how to serve the temple. You sweep it. You come back the next day, you sweep it again. You come back the next day, you sweep it again. And after a while, you realize that the one thing in the world that you love to do and that is your great, great happiness is to sweep the temple and make sure that she's as she should be. So I think, personally, that that's a very good metaphor for what we should be doing with our lives. You can find meaning in your life by serving the planet. And quite likely, it's the only way that you can find meaning in your life. If you're a singer and you sing with the best voice that you can find inside of your own body and you bring that out, that is nature. That's nature is singing through you. And you will find meaning because it is, it's part of the, 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 uh, the, the sacredness, the, the beauty, the power, the passion. The, I mean, also the agony when you lose the things that you are going to love, somebody dies. Or you see a beautiful place destroyed by fire. Yeah. The, the floods, the, 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 various dramas, the, the various dramas that afflict us. It's like the Buddhists say, you know, life is suffering. So if you start from that premise and then you find a, somewhere where there is something that, is, that has the quietness that can in, in, enfold both you and your context, it's, it, it's the same thing. You're not separate anymore. Yeah. That seems to me a, a noble aspiration. If the stones could talk through your voice, what message should they deliver to the people today? <laughs> oh, I can't say that. Huh? No, Maybe you can sing. No, I love to sing. I love to sing. Um, say it singing, whatever comes. No, 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 no. Um, because I'm not a singer. I like to sing, but I'm not a singer. So, um, no, that's for, the, that's for each individual, I think, to find there. What has the earth got to say to you? you know, I'm, not gonna, I'm not a teacher. I'm not you know, a priest. Um, I, I'm talking about me. These are my thoughts about my work, my, my zone. Um, and then I put the pieces out, and other people have relationships with my pieces. That's the that's where I put it out. You know. But in the same they, they time, your piece touch people in some way, give emotion, give uh, unity, give the sensation that is there is not separation. Many people say this. So is something is something that happens to you. But it's not just a matter of you and stone. There is much more. Yes, well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not stuck inside <laughs> a glass box, you know, and I never, I, I'm, I'm connecting all the time with the rest of the world. Yes, I'm just part of this as well. Like any, anybody, any cup of tea, this guy, uh, we're all, you know, we're all, we all coexist yes. in the same medium. How would you, you define Emily Young? What, what if you must if you, if you would say something to this girl? What you would say? I have absolutely no. <laughs> no, I have nothing to say. Um, you find everybody must find their own one. They must. Yes. They must look inside of themselves and find their own joy. You know, or their own agony. You know, find it yourself and um, and work with it. And talk to your friends. Yes. Talk to bits of wood. Talk to flowers. Talk to stones. Yeah, and I'm, 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 you know, Having spoken rather a lot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Emily. Mm. A big pleasure. Yes, thank you for asking me such nice questions. Thank you. You have a lot to say. Yeah, a bit press my button. <laughs> <laughs> the right questions are very good. Yeah, because I feel uh, the camera is like a place where to explore area of our life, of our consciousness that usually we don't. So it's, for me it's something else about using it for sport or for exteriority. It's a way where to open our soul and verse there the knowledge we, some way, little piece we got from life. It's a sharing, it's a, an act of generosity. Let's hope and so. I thank you so much for sharing with no, us. No, thank you for being interested. 
Yeah, you know, by chapeling my own stone, I discovered that this is one of the things that make me more happy in life. Excellent. Excellent. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to explore and feel another time this pure joy. Mm -hmm.